I am working with a team of biologists in the rainforest in Brazil and today we are doing a road trip, an excursion with the staff of a natural reserve. But this time is not for research however, it's just for fun this time. So this YouTube video is not a YouTube video. Due to time constraints and having so many people there it was not possible to make it into a vlog. Consider this to be a home video with leftover footage that is somewhat incoherent, but maybe you'll like it anyway. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bert Coppens talking to you from the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil. What you're about to see is going to be special, but it's also going to be different from most of my other videos. You see, I am going on a two-day trip with a group of biologists to a province that is called Espirito Santo in Brazil. Now in this place we are going to do an expedition and there is potentially going to be a lot of unusual insects, rare butterflies and moths. I am also going to put on the light trap for two days to see what kind of moths will come to the light because I study butterflies and moths here in Brazil. On top of that there is a chance to see a bird of which there are less than 100 individuals left in the wild. It's called a ruby throated tanager. Oh sorry, the cherry throated tanager. This bird is so rare it's practically functionally almost extinct. There is less than 100 of them left. Now they are super super difficult to film. They sit in a canopy of trees. Even if we see the bird, I'm probably not going to be able to make footage of it. They are very small birds, well bigger than that. They sit in the treetops, they are very active, move around. It would be nice to film them, I don't expect it to happen. Um, second of all, this is going to be a very chaotic video because I'm traveling with a group of biologists, conservationists and some other volunteers and enthusiasts. However, because we are traveling with a big group of people, it means that this, this is not about me and myself. I'm tagging along with a group, so I cannot take much breaks. I cannot take much time to stop and make a vlogging style video, because we're going to do a lot of hiking, we're going to do a lot of driving with a van, and when I'm alone I can take the camera like this and talk to it but doing this in this situation would hold up the group. It's also awkward to do it in the middle of a group of people who I don't really know yet to take the camera and hold monologues. So it's going to be, it's going to be in the style of like a homemade holiday video. I'm going to take the camera with me. I'm going to film everything that's interesting but there's not going to be a lot of vlogging. There's just going to be uh, just random footage streaming along with some narration that I'm adding. But it will be a chaotic video. It will feel like um, more like a collection of homemade videos that's not really made for a YouTube audience. Because like I said, I will do a limited amount of vlogging this trip. I will try to film everything for you, but I don't want to do too much narration and hold up the group. But uh, I hope you guys will enjoy and let's see if there's some cool wildlife. Let's get started. Group excursion time. This video is not a vlog. I repeat, not a vlog. I didn't really have much time to film because we are traveling together with a big group today and I didn't want to hold up their schedule with video production. This is just random clips from the Regua group excursion. I hope you can enjoy these leftovers that were filmed not very professionally, sorry. Today we are in the rainforest in the Espirito Santo state in Brazil.
Are you going to the bird fair, Alan? Are you the proper bird fair? This is Bart Coppens from Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am in a very special forest. Beautiful big rainforest in the mountains. And we are going to look around and see what awesome butterflies fly here. And if I find some cool species, I'm going to show it to you. This is unique. It's a very tiny species of morpho butterfly. It's morpho portis. And this species is associated with bamboo thickets around higher altitudes. Amazing. Wow, I even managed to catch one. Don't worry, the butterfly is not hurt and I know how to handle them safely. Morpho portis is much smaller than all the other morpho species in the area. Most morphos are a lot bigger. Absolutely amazing. Morpho butterflies are abundant too, and I caught some. Let me show you the close-ups. No, the butterflies are not hurt and I released them afterwards. Let me show you. And here is a white morpho butterfly. Morpho epistrophus is the name. It's common in medium to higher level elevations. This species too has only one generation a year. Look at the amazing pearlescent shine. And Very natural. It's too bad oh, that your camera is not working. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, just, like just making jokes. If you want, you can use my camera. What if you? If you if I have one camera I'm not using right now. If you want. Can you believe this is an Adelpha butterfly? It's hard to imagine, but it's true. Adelpha licoria seems to be a mimic, maybe. Its common name is the pink banded sister. Adelpha licoria is the most common in cloud forest habitats between about 500 to 1500 meters, but can be found from sea level up to at least 2400 meters. If it sits down, it's easier to see. Kind of look like a butterfly. It. Wow, it wasn't even a butterfly, it was a crazy day flying moth. I suspect it's a day flying notodontid moth. And I think it could be the species Portiella vitula. It seems to be no known, little seems to be known about them. The bright colors may indicate they are unpalatable, or it may be mimicry. Who knows at this point though? I found something awesome. Let me show you a close-up of this one. Oh hey, I'm not even sure, but I think this is Heliconius erato, the red postman, a common but amazing butterfly.
No, they, they, were, they were copulating while they were flying. I don't know where the second one went. I think it was the maybe, maybe only the male can fly and this is like this. Ouchie, so there you go. Ouchie, ouchie. Ouchie, ouchie. I love that. <laughs> oh man, it's cute though. It's cute. Wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, he's off. This is the caterpillar of some kind of butterfly, but I still have to identify it. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice bug, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's, just, it's um, what do they call it? Hemipteran. Yeah. Is it a shield? No, a shield. Uh, it's a mirrored. Uh, is it mirrored? Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's mirrored. What are they called? Um, it's a mirrored. Oh. What? It's a mirrored. Oh. Yeah, it's an assassin. Yeah, yeah. And now we're suddenly going back because this video is just stitched together random clips from a two-day excursion. Of course I didn't just go to sleep. I couldn't resist trapping moths with my, la my light. At night I set up a moth trap. The light bulb I use attracts insects that are interesting and that I wish to photograph and document. And ladies and gentlemen, of course, tonight in Brazil we put up a moth trap. Let me show you a variety of uh, moths that it has attracted. There it is. Aha, we've got ourselves a Copaxa species this lovely night. There seems to be a male of Copaxa Flavo Brunea. In the wild, caterpillars feed on avocado and several types of plants related to the laurel family or the Lauraceae. You know this one? What do you think about tonight? Should we try again here or put the generator thing up? Let's see what they say and see what the plans are for tomorrow and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it would be good to put it in the forest, but I just don't know the logistics of it. Me neither. Aha! I believe this right here is a specimen of Rosilia hesperus. This species is found in rainforests in Ecuador, Venezuela, French Guiana, Guyana, Suriname, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Paraguay and Argentina. This is a large species with bright orange or yellow ground color. It is distinguished from other moths in the Orizaba group by the entirely white protoraric color in hesperus.
beautiful, and orange pieces with pinkish accents. Those chickens are possessed. This is a giant tropical puss moth. Yeah, Notodontidae can become huge in Brazil. Its binomial name is Anurocampa mingens. I love this incredible species. They seem to be relatively common, especially in somewhat higher elevations. I believe this could be an Atlantic rainforest endemic species. It is. Even this hog moth had uh, condensation on its wing. Mm. Yeah, he left the hind wing. Can you see the there? See the white? Oh yeah, they're white. It's distinctive. It's male ossipede. Hmm. Interesting and cute. Hmm, this one must be Enyo Occipete. It is found from the southern United States to Central America to Venezuela, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay and northern Argentina. Very widespread. This one is difficult to identify. Why? Because there is a ton of similar looking species. I do believe however that this race here must be Cosmosoma teutras. There are about 187 known species in the genus Cosmosoma. The moths are restricted to the neotropics and southern limits of the Nearctic, with the greatest diversity and abundance in the rainforest and cloud forests of Brazil, Ecuador and Peru. I suppose I'm not going to sleep on it now. Wow, this one's really nice. Yeah, take a close up of. So beautiful. Beautiful. Since I came to Brazil, I've started to like tiger moths a lot more as well. Mm. Some of them can be really nice here. Now, he's a quite handsome species. Wow! It's a species of tiger moth. It's found in South America, including Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia and Uruguay. It is Faloe Coventa. Sorry. The highlands it can be common, but still it's nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't had it yet in my trip here, so... Okay. I suppose it's not that common. Depends on the location. Oh, that's great. Do you need a picture of it? Yeah, I'll take a quick snap. Oh. Okay. Then I can unplug it. I'll unplug it if you like. Do we need to take all the stuff down, you think? Yeah, I think so. I'll be mm. I wouldn't risk leaving it after I think. Yeah. Oh this is so nice. This is so nice. Go back. So if I if I take I'll carry me yeah. if I take your I'll, I'll take your tripod. I'll yeah, take the stuff uh, back. Yeah. I'll just be making a few close up, that's it. Okay, I guess you've got some lights on down there, so things are happening. Yeah, they're gonna have breakfast soon, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'll take this sheet down so I'll put it outside in there. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. I'll be down in a minute. Mm -hmm. And here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! Did that second hog moth just scare away my first hog moth? <laughs> Take number two. And here, ladies and gentlemen, here we have a wonderful specimen of the Ademarius ganascus. A wonderful species of moth. That's really cool is its hind wings. If it dare to show them for a second. Ah. Can have very nice pink color. Although it really doesn't like to show those hind wings very much. Come on. Well, may as well force it a little bit. But here you see some of that color. Nice pink, eh? Boom, it's morning again. Like I said, the video is a little bit incoherent. Today we're going to see a special bird. Ladies and gentlemen, this reserve is dedicated to one of the rarest birds in the world. It's called the ruby-throated tanager. And I've been told that in the entire world population there's less than 100 individuals left. And that's what we are looking for today, among other things as well. I have good news, ladies and gentlemen, and I have bad news. The bad news is that the footage is like five seconds long. But the good news is I managed to film a ruby-throated tanager. So that makes me one of the people who has filmed one of the rarest birds in the world, yay! So this is actually kind of amazing footage, but it's like five seconds because they went away really fast. Let me show you anyways. Moving up, no? Yeah. Less than 20 individuals of this species are known. The cherry-throated tanager, Nemosia ruhai. This species is highly endangered. Since its discovery in 1870, the bird was only known from a single specimen for over 100 years. It was only until 1998 that the first verified substantive sighting was even recorded by ornithologists. Conservationalists estimated only 10 to 20 individuals of this species of bird remain. Since its rediscovery, the species is critically endangered and it may be extinct in the future. The cherry-throated tanager spends the majority of its life in the rainforest canopy, searching for bugs among the branches. 
but rampant agriculture, con con or agriculture conversion has forced the species to live in highly fragmented habitat that also faces expanding urban encroachment. The cherry-throated tanager may be one of the world's rarest birds, and this footage is unique, although it's not much. It's an example of how many species are declining and endangered in the rainforest. Let's play the footage again in slow motion, because it's just that rare and special. Moving up. Here it is. Pause the video. Can you see it? This bird is so rare, there could be less than 20 left in the wild. Just take a close look. Tá vendo, Nika? Sim, sim, tô na cara aqui. Que legal. Aqui tem tô pertinho aqui. Dá bem, ó. Yes. Um, dois. Yes. Number one, né? I wish I had a professional bird camera with zoom, that would have helped me in the future. Maybe it's something to crowdfund on Patreon. With my current equipment it's hard to film birds, because it's more suitable to film insects instead. Algumas vezes, mas... Que espetáculo! Nossa estrada é muito, muito bonita, eu gosto de ficar aqui. Sim, sim, não, mas é... Nossa. É bem, bem comparado ao rio, né? Wow! In the treetops there's morpho butterflies. They are something special. Here's the species Morpho Hercules. They are not super rare, but also elusive. They spend most of the time above the treetops. Approaching them is very difficult. These Morpho butterflies are very large. My dream is to film one up close, but they rarely ever come down to the floor, sadly. Huh. Fight is breaking out. So butterflies don't have stuff like proteins and amino acids in their diet. It's interesting. It would be nice if one then came down to the ground. Fly. Yeah, it's really typical. If I fly very slow for a butterfly, ah, it's more absolutely Hercules. You so could feel the it's absolutely there. Hercules. I have no more doubt. I almost think you can hear them flap. Oh, it's so God, what I wouldn't give for one. Black and gold cotton that it is found in this elevation, but I don't think that has a quality. Amazing humans. I don't know whether that's what they want to do. Fantastic. Open from seven? Yeah. We can't have your tea. Oh, of course, dear. We've got tea. That sounds good. Make a tea, doesn't it? Which one's tea? They're going to make a tea. Yeah. We've got a kitchen in our apartment.
Boom! Later at night I was back to some moth trapping. Prepare for some more moths. Wow, fantastic. Here's the moon. The moon over the mountains. You probably can't really see it. <coughs> Oops, I have the hiccups. Night number two. <coughs> Putting up the moth trap. I should stop having hiccups. That would be nice. So this is our setup today. So the full moon is actually quite bad if you go moth trapping. When there's a full moon you get very little moths. I suppose the light of the moon competes with the light of the moth trap, unfortunately. But we do get a nice diversity of small stuff. I'm hoping to get silk moths or hawk moths though. Of these tiny little moths there is an insane amount tonight. Like an insane amount, can you see them? They're all over the sheet tonight. All over. Like, there's a crazy, crazy, crazy number of them. They're very pretty though, so I guess I'm not complaining. But their numbers are so incredibly abundant. Like, if we look here, here's another one. Wow, nice spots on the abdomen, eh? And, here's another one. It's beautiful, fantastic. Here's another one. Well, I guess you know the point, but here's more of them. How about here on the walls? There's more of them. And here there's more of them, like most of these moths are this little tiger moth. Tonight is crazy abundant, for some reason. I guess it's just their peak flight right now. Something in the distance appears to be very bioluminescent. Is, is this fireflies? I don't know. It's really massive. What? What is it? This appears to be a large male of Hylacea nanus, a very tiny species of Saturnid, also known as the Emperor Moths. The underside of this species is quite cool, and they do a little threat pose to intimidate their enemies. Did you know there's over 50 species of Hylacea in Brazil? These small Saturnids are super diverse. No, no. Oh, it's innocuous. no, 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 no. Gosh, you just, you Dutch people. I'm yeah. not falling for this. Oh, <laughs> Pretty good cool. chance of identifying that. No, but Victor Becker would. Probably a tiger. We don't need Victor. Well, you got. <laughs> good night, Bart. See you. Yo. This tiger moth was impossible to identify for me somehow. If you know this species, then please send me a message. Correctly identify it for me and I will marry you instantly. Just kidding, I will be grateful though if you identify it.
Here's a cute leopard. I'm not sure, but it could be Tolipe or something related. Here's some kind of Apatelodidae. I'm not sure what species. Do you know the name? This is a male of Cochitius di Poncho. Believe it or not, but the males of this species are considered to be small compared to the female. The females of this species are among the largest hog moths in the world. So let's hope I find a massive female someday. The host plants are Anonacea, so stuff from the sour sob family. It is found in tropical and subtropical lowlands in Cuba and the West Indies from Bolivia, southern Brazil and Argentina to Venezuela, Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Mexico. It is also found very rarely in parts of the United States such as Florida and even Texas, but it really is quite rare there. There's a sort of vague, but I factual think it, That's right, but I did, get, I did get caught out once, because I... There was a... Do you remember there was an anniversary of 9-11? I forget which one it was, and I got quite a lot of it in the news, and he said, he said to me, your mum and I were in New York. Jeez. Mm. So you just live in a sort of world of... That's the end for now. Sorry if this video is so random. It's just leftover footage from a cool trip and I stitched it together in an attempt to make it somewhat watchable. Alright folks, and I'm back in my research house. That was a chaotic video, it was a fast paced video. But once again, think of it like a home video, you know, like the people who bring the... Alright people, I'm back from the trip. I hope you guys enjoyed it despite the fact it was a very random and chaotic video. It's just small snippets of footage of what was actually a two and a half day long trip. There was a lot to see and a lot to do. But once again, think of it as home footage. Think of the families who used to bring their video camera along with them on vacation and film small snippets and cool moments. It was something like that, okay? There are so many on the people on the strip. I can't just stop anywhere and vlog like I do in most of my YouTube videos. I just from time to time make a short snippet and that's it. So maybe the quality is different than usual. However, the bird footage, even though it wasn't the world's greatest footage, it's only a few seconds of footage of the birds flying around, but it's a species of bird that's most likely going to be extinct in a few decades. There's less than a hundred left in the wild and while I hope for the conservation efforts and their survival to be effective, it's a pretty critical situation at this point, so there's a chance that this bird that you're seeing in my video could be extinct at one so some point in the future, so it's gonna be... It's just valuable footage, even though it's a bit fake. So I hope you enjoyed this um, little bit string together video I made. Bye bye, hope to see you in the next video. 
My channel is demonetized and YouTube refuses to tell me why. It sucks because I never uploaded anything controversial, so if you like my videos, you can support them by becoming a member on my Patreon. The income I make via Patreon also helps me study and document moths in a world where they are sadly declining and are in need of attention. Otherwise, you can buy unique designs on my Red Redbubble shop. I designed all of them myself personally. Yes, I photographed all of those individual moths myself. I have designed phone cases, mouse mats, stickers, t-shirts, postcards, pillows, clocks and a lot more. So go and check it out. And if you buy one product, I get about 20% of the profit, so it helps me a little too. Ele quer que ele vá junto. A água está muito fria.